Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this brief video, I'm going to show you how I applied enamel to these pieces. Enamel is glass. It comes in clear, translucent, and opaque colors. It's sold in a variety of forms, including lumps, threads, powders, liquids, and paints. For these torch-fired pieces, I used enamel that was ground into a powder and sifted to a uniform size. Now, you must wear eye protection and a dust mask whenever you work with this material. You don't want to breathe it in or get it in your eyes. Essentially, I applied the enamel to my pieces with a sifter or by using a binding agent or an extremely clean glue. And I used a torch to melt the glass. Well, it's a little more complicated than that or I wouldn't be making this video about it. Here I have some beautiful examples of results that I've gotten using the torch fired technique. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I enameled these using different approaches. For these two pieces, I used purple rose colored transparent enamel on 16 gauge thick copper sheet metal that was thoroughly annealed and cleaned. What I did was simple. I started by applying a product called Scalix to the back. This is so that the back won't become heavily oxidized. I let it dry and then I used a special sifter with a mask on, of course, to gently sift a thin, even layer of enamel over the piece. I then carefully moved the pieces to my metal grate where I apply heat to them. Before I start the firing process, I want to show you a second approach that allows for a variety of colors to be applied and fired on a single piece. For this example, I used saltwater etching to create cavities in the copper sheet. And we have a video on saltwater etching if you want to learn more about that process. Now to deal with the different colors, I organized them using a painter's palette. And I had previously wet the enamels with a clear binding agent called Clear Fire. The palette that I'm using is one that I've used before and the enamel in it has dried, but it can be rehydrated with Clear Fire. Using an eyedropper, I put one drop of Clear Fire in the dark blue and I really like that shade of light blue and I decided to use the red. Now I can just use a paintbrush to mix the colors and apply them into the indentations. This is called wet packing. Wet packing uses the clear fire as an adhesive to help control the application of the enamel into the recessed areas where you want it. Now of course you want to use a different paintbrush for each color as you never want to mix them. The completed piece goes onto the grate to dry or you could place the piece under a heat lamp to dry. The next step is to turn on the torch. Now you slowly warm up the piece. This can take a little while, so be patient. Once they're warm, you can move a little closer. You can see it begin to turn to a stage where it looks like dirty burnt sugar. It kind of has a, an orange peel surface to it. And now the enamel is nice and glossy and smooth. Now I will do the next one and you'll see the same phases. Now we're seeing that burnt sugar look. There's an orange peel look. And now the enamel is nice and glossy and smooth. Now I'll move on to the last one because the last one has exposed copper and you'll see heat staining on the top surface. So again, I will heat this one for a little while and move the flame closer. And now there's heat staining. Notice that the enamel is a weird color now. Now we're seeing that burnt sugar look. There's an orange peel look. And finally, we want to make sure that the top surface now appears smooth in each of the recesses. You might have noticed that the enamel changes color throughout the process. That's why you always need to determine the color you want from a color chart. The color of the enamel powder may not even match the final color. And when it's really hot, the enamels may just look like shades of gray. In this case, I've put a bench block on the grid, which will be a nice cooling surface. 
you may see some of the oxidation that was caused by the heating process ping off of the exposed copper. This shouldn't affect the result. All that's left is to clean the backs of the pieces. I like to use Penny Bright for this. And then you have beautiful pieces like these. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, the Online Jewelry Academy has over 300 other free videos on its playlist, including one called Torch Fired Enamel that shows all of the tools and steps related to this subject in far greater detail. The Online Jewelry Academy also has three paid classes on Udemy.com. There's a basic jewelry making class, a course that covers five different stone setting techniques, and one demonstrating how to make a beautiful hinge bracelet. You can find discount codes in the description to this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button that you never miss a future release. Thanks for watching.